this computer. Okay, good morning to those of you who it's morning. It's evening here. Welcome, I'm filling in for Hannah Mason, who has been doing a wonderful job of helping all of us to keep our souls connected to the light rather than delving and falling down into the darkness. And um, this morning I wanted to focus on getting to know some of the parts that are struggling right now and helping them to feel kindness and compassion from our, our souls and from each other's souls as we connect here and also from Hashem and Kalal Yisrael. Uh, let's start by doing some mindfulness practice where we do some breathing and some grounding. And whether you're sitting or standing or lying down, it doesn't matter. And Beth, I'm going to mute you if that's okay. I didn't realize I wasn't muted. Oh, it's a, thank you. Um, so we're going to find our breath as an anchor. And I'm noticing that my back is a little stiff and sitting in this chair for a while today. And I'm going to breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in. Breathing out. As I breathe in, I'm going to let my breath straighten my spine and lighten that weight. And as I breathe out, I'm going to ground that down my spine, down my legs and into the floor. I'm going to do that for a minute. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to notice if there are any distractions. There may be sounds around me. I may have a busy brain. I may have an ache or a pain. I may suddenly feel thirsty or hungry. And then let's come back to the anchor of the breath. And I wanted to start with the intention of what we can gather from this capital of Tehillim. Where will my help come from? I'm going to raise my eyes to the mountains and recognize Ezri mi'im Hashem Ose Shamayim Ba'aretz Ezri mi'im Adonai Ose Shamayim Ba'aretz from Hashem, from the maker of heaven and earth. Al yitain lamot raglecha He won't allow your feet to falter. Ba'al yonum shomrecha Your guardian doesn't sleep 24 hours a day, all the time with you, with us. He doesn't get sleepy. He doesn't sleep. Show Mary Israel, he's constantly watching over us. Hashem is watching over you. He's your shadow. He's by your right hand. Yamam Hashemesh lo yakeka bayarach balayla. By day, the sun won't hurt you, and nor the moon at night. Hashem Yishmarcha Mikora, God will guard you from all evil, 
Mishmor et nafshecha, your soul will be watched over by Hashem. And in fact, we will go inside and explore where that soul is with that awareness and kind of look a little bit inside and see if there's something inside that might need some help. Adonai yishmor tzecha, tzecha uvarecha uvoecha meyatav yad olam. Hashem will guard your going out and your coming in from now and all the way up to eternity. Okay, keeping that in mind, that Hashem is guarding you, and this capital has been said for thousands of years since the time of David Amalek, and all those people who said that capital, all those prayers are all banked in Shemayim, even though we don't always feel it. The prayers of the human beings who said it are still there, and they're permanent, and they're they're there to help us and to support us. And Hashem is here all the time, day and night, never sleeping. And let's take a minute or two, or maybe a few more minutes to kind of focus on the intention of finding, finding that place which is above, above the physical world, going up and noticing where Hashem is. And we can, we can use the tools of curiosity and compassion of where each one of us might have seen evidence of Hashem down here. may have been in a smile of a child. Or the beauty of an elder. Or the kingship of a rabbi or a rabbitson. Reflecting the holiness and the beauty of Hashem's creation. I have a photo here. This is in Yerushalayim somewhere. Following the theme of water and rocks. Of water flowing down from above to below. Where do we find Hashem? Each one of us has a pentelated, a part of Hashem within us, which is untarnished, incorruptible, eternal, beautiful soul. And let's think of a time when you saw a revelation of that in another person through an action that they did. It doesn't take much imagination based on all the videos that are coming out of the beautiful souls that we're seeing. I saw a video of a soldier who was on his way out to the war. And a bag of letters came from some kids in the US and he pulled out a letter from a little girl. And that letter said, you are a hero and you're protecting us and thank you. And it was a hand colored letter on a piece of paper and he took that letter and he put that letter along with pictures and letters from his family and put it in his pocket. 
and he went out to the war and he was injured and he didn't know if he would survive. And he took out that letter of that little girl who was under 11 years old. And he held on to that letter because her encouragement gave him the courage to stay alive and to fight off death. And when he got to the hospital, he reached out and he said, thank you to that little girl. And someone on the other end found that little girl. And in this video that I watched, the little girl and her family talked to the soldier. And Claudia Searle is such a small family. The little girl's mother came from the same town that this soldier's parents came from or his grandparents or his parents, one or the other. And people knew people, we're all family. And that miracle of the revelation of our connection was in that beautiful video of how our souls are not separate. And let's take a few minutes to reflect on our own experiences of connecting to that greater soul of Claudia Sorrell and the connection to Hashem who doesn't sleep and is constantly following us and there has our back. And notice if your mind is still agitated or if it's if your mind is a little quieter. And notice if you have any aches or pains or tightness perhaps in the throat or the neck, the jaw, heaviness in the chest. Clenching in the gut, tightness in the shoulders. And if it feels good, you can take your hand and offer compassionate touch. And now I'd like to invite you to take a journey inside. If you've never done this before, don't worry, I'll guide you. And it's something that we learn how to do that really, really is an innovation of the last 20 years and a sign of Mashiach coming. The story behind this innovation is that a Jewish man, a psychologist by the name of Dick Schwartz, was working with patients who had difficulties with eating disorders. And he realized that the things that he was doing weren't reaching and helping them, and many of them were suicidal. Chastashalom, but it happens. And through his conversations and his work with them, he realized that they talked about a part of them that wanted something. And he started talking to those parts. And as they learned to talk to those parts, they realized that there was something that wasn't a part. 
And that was something that was pure and incorruptible. And that was the soul, which Dr. Schwartz calls the wise self. We can call it our soul. Everyone has one. Jew or non-Jew, some people's dark sides overshadow them to the point where they can't be found anymore. It seems like that's what's happened to Paro. In a couple of weeks' time, when Paro hardened his heart and lost his Bafira, and he got swallowed up in his own ego. And that happens. That evil overtakes some people and their soul becomes swallowed up, but that's very unusual. Most of us can find that wise self or that soul. So how do we do it? We invite curiosity and compassion and collaboration and creativity. And we say to our parts, who wants to come talk to me? And we look at our bodies and we feel an emotion or we feel an ache or a pain. And right now there's part of me that's holding my shoulders tight. And that part holds my shoulders tight a lot and thinks that she needs to overfunction for other people. And I can tell her, listen, you know, you do a good job of shouldering a lot of responsibility. And I love you and care about you. But there's only so much we can do. And it's really good to let other people do their work and step back and you take care of your work and you're free. You're free to let other people take responsibility for themselves and you can go rest. There's a couch right there in my room. Now I'm gonna go back inside and see if there I have any feelings sensations or emotions. And we can start having invited the parts. We can say all parts are welcome. Let's see if my body has any sensations. Let's see, maybe a clenching in the jaw or a heaviness in the chest. And oh, tightness in the gut. These emotions and these parts, these personalities inside, they're, they're not your soul. They're there to protect you. They activated somehow at some time in our lives. With all that's going on, it's easy to get irritated and impatient. Perhaps there's a part that's feeling irritated or impatient, or perhaps there's a part that's feeling exhausted. All we have to do today is offer curiosity and compassion to that part. And we can borrow the Kohanic bracha. Yivarechecha Hashem, Yishmarecha, to this part. Na'er Hashem panav elecha yichunecha. Yisa Hashem panav elecha, v'yasem lecha shalom. Tell the part it's okay to relax. Your soul can take over and Hashem has your back. 
And let's just stay with that and use the mantra Shalom. And send that loving kindness and compassion, that rachamim to that part that's struggling in whatever way that part is struggling. And you can say the word shalom as you breathe in and breathe out. Or you can visualize the letters or do both. Shalom. And you can take this to the next level and think about somebody close to you who somehow is struggling because they have parts which are really having a hard time and they can't self-regulate because of the fear. And that part is rising up and taking over. And let's send curiosity and compassion to that person, whether it's a child or spouse or a parent or a neighbor or the taxi driver or whoever it is. The Yasin. Shalom. And as we're doing this, notice if your head gets busy and thoughts distract the practice. That's okay. That's a part. You can ask that part if they don't mind resting for a little bit because we're going to stop in a few minutes and then all the plan and the busy planning and the busyness of the day can take part. And sending compassion and shalom to a person who is close to you. And then extending that to anyone who is experiencing the stresses of the war mothers and children and soldiers and parents and hostages who are still incarcerated and starving and hostages who are in hospitals and soldiers who are in hospitals and medical staff who are overwhelmed and overworked and teachers and anybody and everybody. And extend that also to anybody who is in Israel or outside of Israel, Jewish and non-Jewish, who is suffering and struggling who is anybody who has not lost irreversibly a connection to the light which is there given by the creator let's go back to noticing the breath and noticing any sensations whether you feel more tightness or less tightness Whether you feel calmer or more agitated, it's just awareness is all we need and curiosity. That's all we need to connect to that light. When you're ready, you can open your eyes and reorient back into the room. And I have a picture of the Kotel that was posted. It was taken on a Hanukkah. It looks like it was raining. 
And thank you everybody for joining me, whether in synchronous time or asynchronous time. I'm gonna stop the recording now.